Hi, I'm Liz. Thank you for joining me. Today's movement practice is going to be a yin and a yang yoga practice or movement practice. And the idea around this is to start to tap into these different energies that we all have within us. So our yin energy, which is our feminine energy, our yang energy, which is our masculine energy. And within that, there's different energies that make up these two sides. So our yin, our feminine, think the left side of your body. And this is our ability to let go, our ability to surrender, our ability to create, which is a really, really beautiful thing. Our darkness, which is not a bad thing. And then there's lots of other energies that go along with this as well. And then our yang energy, which is our masculine energy. Think the right side of your body. And this is our determination, our drive, our ability and our willingness to set boundaries within our life for ourself and our family, our light. Think doing, you know, you're gonna get stuff done. That is your masculine energy. And a lot of us maybe uh, drift, you know, a bit more into one. I know personally, um, spent most of my life probably in the masculine energy, um, you know, this having to do, do, do all the time and starting to open up now into the yin, into the feminine, this kind of a billing, sorry, this ability to let go and not have to control everything in my life. So hoping that throughout the practice today, um, you start to, or you can start to feel into these different energies um, and then you can start to cultivate them in your own life and we use them in our everyday life. Uh, so our yoga practice can be very, very practical and it can help you in with whatever situation you're in, in your life. <sighs> so we're gonna start just sitting up nice and tall with a lengthened spine. Let the shoulders relax, slightly tuck the chin. And just take a moment. Start to connect into your breath. You might take a few breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. And when you feel ready, tuning into your nostril breathing. Take a moment to settle into your space, settle onto your mat, wherever you are. So we're going to move into a breathing practice, an alternate nostril breathing practice. And this is a beautiful, beautiful practice to do, uh, especially if you're feeling a little bit sort of um, kind of off. <laughs> or if the brain feels really, really busy. Uh, this is something that I like to do just to kind of bring myself back in and it feels like it sort of evens out uh, the two sides. So I'm just gonna demonstrate for you to start. So your right hand will gently block your right nostril. You breathe in through the left nostril and then your ring finger on the right hand will just gently block the left nostril, breathe out through the right nostril then we breathe in through the right nostril, gently block the right nostril, breathe out through the left. That's one round. We're gonna do about eight or so rounds of the alternate nostril breathing. So just finding your comfortable seat. Just connect back into the breath. We'll take a clearing breath to begin, breathing in, breathing out. Bring the right hand to the nostril, breathing in through the left. Block the left, breathing out through the right. 
in through the right. Lock the right out through the left. In left. Lock left, out right. In right. Lock right, out left. In left. Lock left, out right. In right. Lock right, out left. In left. Lock left, out right. In right, lock right, out left. In left, lock left, out right. In right, lock right, out left. In left. Lock left, out right. In right. Lock right, out left. Two more rounds in left. Lock left, out right. In right. Lock right, out left. In left. Lock left, out right. In right. Lock right, out left. It's gently releasing the right hand. And it's taking a couple of breaths in through both nostrils. It's feeling into the effects of that breathing practice. We're going to make our way onto our back and I should have mentioned at the start of the class just to have some kind of prop with you. I do apologise, someone's now mowing their lawn outside, there's always someone doing that around here. <laughs> so either a cushion, a yoga bolster if you've got one, or a yoga block. Uh, if you don't have any of these things, that's totally fine. Uh, using uh, books are uh, also great, um, or pillows. Uh, it's anything that you can find that you can use for some support if needed. The first shape we are going to need some kind of support though under the lumbar spine. We're going to make our way onto our back. Thanks, lying down. Hug the knees in towards the chest. Take a little moment here. Roll around on the spine. A little side to side or up and down. So our yin practice. When we find the shape, or I'm going to guide you into the shapes, and we want to be passive or as passive as we can. We want to relax into that shape as much as we can. If there's any kind of risky type pain where it just doesn't feel right in your body, come out of the shape straight away. There may be some uncomfortable sensations. Um, so just you, know, you being your own teacher and um, being that guide for yourself as to how it feels within your body, does it feel okay, if it's just uncomfortable and you know you can stay, then uh, just you know, breathing into it and uh, staying with that. So our first shape is going to be supported bridge. So this is our yin, one of the yin parts of our practice. So it's gently lifting your hips off the floor, grab the support, so either the block, the book, the cushion, the pillow, a rolled up towel, and then placing it underneath, just at the bottom of the lower back. So if you know where your sacrum is, sort of that uh, triangle shaped bone, bone, bone <laughs> um, between the pelvis, it's finding that position there, and then resting that spot down onto the support. 
let the shoulders relax. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that lawnmower out there, but when we are practicing yoga, we are going to have distractions from the outside world. And it's a part, all part of the practice is to come back into yourself, come back into your body, come back into your breath. It's not always going to be perfect. It's always going to be textbook. Just hoping it doesn't get any closer. <laughs> Take a little moment here, nostril breathing. Let the shoulders relax, let the muscles of the face relax. And there may be a compression like feeling through that lower back area, just knowing that that is, I don't ever really like to say normal, but it is a sensation that is often felt when we come into this kind of position. And then it's up to you whether or not it is too much. This is the great thing about our yoga practice is when we're working with our body, we start to learn what our limits are, when it's time to pull back, and when it's time to push. So this little dance between the yin and the yang and within each energy, we sort of have to find um, find the other, if that makes sense. So within our yin, maybe sometimes we do need to push that little bit more, find that little bit of yang. And then within the yang, when we are doing the doing, sometimes we need to allow ourselves to soften into that. So the two kind of dance with one another, they work together not completely separate. <sighs> Option to straighten your legs out. You may find this increases the sensation through the body. Option then to take the arms overhead. As much as you can, bringing all your focus and awareness into your breath and then into the body. So we get this opportunity within the yin practice to really tune into ourself, tune into the sensations within us. Take three more breaths. So relaxing with each exhale. And then bringing your feet to the floor if the legs were straight. Bringing the arms back down by your side. Just take your time coming out of the shape, lifting the hips off the support. Move the support out of the way, lower back down to the mat. Take any kind of movement you need here. So it might be again a little roll around on the spine. You might need to hug the knees in. Or it might be stillness. You might find that lying flat on the back is what you need. So again, with our yin practice, we generally hold for a little bit longer. I'm just giving you a little bit of a taste of what it is today. As much as we can, we want to stay with our focus turned inwards to ourself. Even coming out of the shape. So you might feel sensations as you're holding the shape. They might get more intense, they might drift away. 
then you may find that as you come out of the shape, there's still sensations happening. There's energy moving through the body. Let's take one more breath here. Now hugging the knees in towards the chest, creating a little bit of momentum now, starting to roll up and down the spine. I've got my shirt tied up in the back of it. <laughs> digging into my back as I roll backwards and forwards. If you can, coming to standing with that momentum without using your hands. If that doesn't happen today, that's okay. Coming to the top of the mat, feet either together or underneath your hips. We're gonna make our way now through some sun salutation, so creating a little bit more actual physical movement through the body. Take a breath in, reach up. Breathing out, fold forward. I've got Aria here on the mat with me. <laughs> Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, plant the hands, step back to plank. I'm gonna to have to move around Aria today. Drop down to the knees, lower your body all the way down to the mat. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest, low cobra. Lower the chest down to the floor, press back, tuck the toes, coming up into downward facing bend. It's our first one of the class today. Take a little walk out from side to side. Aria loves to join me for my yoga practice. She thinks she's helping me or she's gonna come in for a smooch. Hello, darling. And then <laughs> take a look forward. Step the feet between the hands. Halfway lift, forward fold. Breathing in, come back to standing. Breathing out, hands come back down by your side. Breathing in, reach. Breathing out, fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, plant the hands, step back to plank. From the knees or the toes, take a little shift of the body weight forward. Draw the belly in, lower the chest halfway down, bending through the elbows. Press through the palms, lift the chest, upward facing dog. Press the hips back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Breath out, breathing in, look forward, bend the knees, breathing out, step the feet between the hands, halfway lift, forward fold, lifting with the chest, come back to standing, bring the hands back down by your side. Breathing in, reach, breathing out, fold, breathing in, halfway lift, breathing out, plant the hands, step or jump back, Lower the body down, lift the chest, upward facing dog. Press the hips back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, breath out. Breathing in, look forward, breathing out. Step or lightly jump to the top of the mat. Halfway lift, forward fold. Breathing in, come back to standing. Breathing out, hands by your side. So noticing now the difference between that uh, supported bridge shape that we were first in, where we let ourselves go, we let ourselves relax as much as we could, to now this movement through the body where we need uh, a little bit more effort. There's still effort on both accounts, but there's a little bit more momentum, a little bit more effort from the body, we need our muscles, our joints, uh, to allow us to move into these certain Breathing in, reach. Breathing out, fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, plant the hands, step or jump back. Lower down, press the chest up. Lift the hips back, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, look forward. Breathing out, step or jump to the top. Halfway lift, forward fold. Breathing in, come back to standing. Breathing out hands by your side. Good, we're gonna do that one more time. Breathing in, reach. Breathing out, fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, plant the hands, step or jump back. Lower down, lift the chest, upward facing dog. Pressing back into downward facing dog. Holding here, Just pressing the hips up. Bend the knees as much as you need to here. So the main thing we want is a long spine. So you can see here that my spine is nice and lengthened. 
the knot kind of arching up through the back. Really press down into the palms, bring the shoulders together, or the shoulder blades together. Draw the belly button towards the spine and press the hips up towards the ceiling. Like you're trying to kind of shine your butt um, up towards the sky. So we're going to come into our second yin shape. Take a breath in, take the right leg into the air, breathing out, step the right foot between the hands, drop the left knee down. Now this is always a class favorite when I do teach yin. Um, <laughs> might have heard my sarcasm there. We're gonna come into dragon. So I'll just show you from the front position here. So we want the right foot around the outside of the right hand. And we want a nice line from our wrist, our elbow to our shoulder. That can sometimes help to use the props here. So if you do have a block or blocks to bring the uh, hands to the block, just to give yourself that little bit extra length. Pardon me. Um, we want the shoulders away from the ears. And again, we want that length and spine. Yeah, and then just check out your ankle knee lined up. So whatever kind of works best for you. Now, this is where we meet the yin and the yang together. So your upper body, we need to push down into the palms, lift the chest up, roll the shoulders back. That needs a little bit of effort. The lower body, try and relax that down as much as you can. Lightly draw the belly button in. Now this is one of those shapes that <laughs> may, I don't know, I can't say for you, but it may start to get more intense as we hold here. And we're not holding today for as long as we usually might. Just a little bit of a taste for you, if you haven't done this before. Just letting everything soften. Breathing in and out of the nose. If you need to breathe out of the mouth, please do. You might feel sensations through the front of the left hip. It might be even around the side of the right hip or even in the front of the right hip. So just taking this opportunity to tune in to where you feel these sensations. get challenging connect into the breath you can bring a little smile to your face signaling to your system that it's okay to relax knowing that we're not here forever so like everything it will come to an end going through challenging times, difficult times, and just knowing that it will end. So everything must come to an end. Everything's a cycle. And when we are going through challenging times, we can practice and know that we can see them as opportunities. Sometimes it can be hard to do that. But opportunities for ourselves to grow and get stronger, we get more resilient. And my is about to bark, there we go. <laughs> Take one more breath in, full breath out. Very slowly, start to press yourself back. <laughs> it's always a good one coming out of that. And then any kind of movement or stillness that you need, it can sometimes feel nice to come into plank. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it just helps to release that front of the, the hips there. Maybe a downward facing dog. Just take whatever you need. And then when you're ready, 
press the hips into downward facing dog if you're not already there. Breathe in, take the left leg into the air. Breathing out, step the left foot through, drop the right knee down to the mat. Aria, come here. Come on. Come here. Come and join me. Good. And setting yourself up for the other side. <laughs> come on, sit down. Sit down. Finding that position. If you need that support underneath the palms, adding it. Just pressing evenly into the palms, shoulders away from the ears. And again, finding that length, so drawing the belly button in, finding the length through the spine. Aria, come here. And then just coming back into that, remembering that our practice is not always going to be perfect. There's going to be distractions, noises around you. And we work with it, we don't fight it. <sighs> Connect into the breath, breathing in and out of the nose. As much as you can, letting the hips drop down towards the mat. Bring the awareness into your body. Where do you feel this? Where are the sensations? Are they really deep? Are they a bit more superficial? And then knowing they're too much, it's okay to pull back a little bit. And if there's no sensation, it's okay to go deeper as well. It's okay to push sometimes knowing when to do that, knowing when to push, knowing when to pull back. Let the, the face soften. And just tapping into this energy, this feminine energy, this yin energy. Just letting go, surrendering. to use your breath, breathing in through the nose, extending the exhale as you breathe out either of the nose or the mouth, starting to let things soften. One more breath. <sighs> Slowly start to shift back. <laughs> and then any kind of movement or stillness that you need. <laughs> Aria, come here, darling. moment just in whatever position you need to be in Step or jump to the top, halfway lift, forward fold, 
breathing in, come back to standing, breathing out, hands down by your side. Breathing in, reach. Breathing out, fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, plant the hands, step or jump back. Lower down, press the chest forward, press the hips back. Breathing in, right leg lifts. Breathing out, step the right foot through. Turn the back foot in. We're gonna come up into warrior one. So we want about a hip distance with our feet. Chest, hips forward. Sink down into the front leg. Press out through the outside edge of the back foot. So as much as you can, square the chest. Hands can start on your hips. Option to reach them up. That can be shoulder width apart. Or palms come together, creating kind of like a, sort of like a trigger kind of grip with the palms. You can look up slightly if that feels okay for the neck. Check in with the shoulders, make sure they're away from the ears. So yes, we're holding this shape, but there's a lot of effort that needs to happen from the body. But within that effort, we can find some ease. So press through the heel, lift the chest, draw the belly in, and then sink down into that leg. Take one more breath in. Breath out, you're gonna open up. Your left leg's gonna bend. You're gonna come down into Skandasana or kind of like a low single leg squat with the right leg extended. You might be here, you might be up here. So just finding what works best for your body. There's no kind of wrong or right sort of way to do it. Just as long as there's no unnecessary pain in the body or tension or any kind of weird feelings in your knee. Lift the chest up, draw the belly in, and whatever you like with your palms. They might be on the floor or together. One more breath in. And then breathing out, shift back around into your right leg. Step back, downward facing dog. Breathe in, left leg lifts. Breathing out, step the left foot through, turn the back foot out, find that hip width apart stance. Sink down into the front leg, push out through the outside edge of the back foot, reach the arms up, and then whatever works best for you with the shoulders either apart or hands together. Slightly looking up maybe, there might be a little back bend that starts to happen. Knowing how strong you are, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Take one more breath in. As you breathe out, open that up. So this time the right leg is gonna bend. And again, just coming down as far as feels okay. Sorry to have my back to you. Extending out the left leg. And while we're in these shapes, we can still pay attention. So how does it feel in your body? What do you feel? Is there lengthening? Is there effort? You can feel the muscles contracting, working. Draw the belly in lightly. One more breath in. Breath out, shift back to the front. Step back, downward facing dog. Full breath in, full breath out. Drop down to the knees. Press the hips back into a child's pose. We're gonna hold here for a little bit. This is our third yin shape. Again, if you've got some kind of bolster or cushion, it can be really nice to bring that underneath you and just rest down onto that. Option, arms can be out in front or if that's not okay for the shoulders, resting the forehead down to the fists. We might need something underneath the hip area. Just working with your body. So this is a beautiful calming position. So just take your time. Just 
just make your way through the body, relaxing it bit by bit, using the breath to allow that to happen. Starting to soften, starting to let go. It's a really beautiful thing when we can start to tap into these energies and allow the two to meet. And starting to, to work with them. So kind of like everything, there's these cycles that we go through and they're always happening. There's these beginnings, there's endings. And some days, or sometimes in our life, it is our time to go, it is our time to push, it's our time to work, be strong, have courage. And then there's going to be times when we need to pull back, we need to let go, we need to give ourselves space so we can create, so we can rest, so we can recharge. Take one more breath in, full breath out. And just pulling yourself forward. Take one last downward facing dog. Bend through the knees. It's gonna take a little step or just however it feels good for you to get there. You're gonna jump the feet through and come down onto your buttocks and then down onto your back. Come here, come on. Here she comes, she wants to. <laughs> and just bring the feet to the floor. I'm gonna stay here. About hip width apart. Take a breath in, breathing out. Tuck the pelvis back, roll the spine off the mat. Chin comes in towards the chest, hello. <laughs> and just with the hips lifted, squeezing through the glutes, pressing evenly through the heels. Take a breath in at the top, breathing out, imprint the spine back down into the mat. So Aria really likes to join me for hip bridge. <sighs> Hello. Take a breath in, breathing out, roll the spine up. <laughs> Hold for a moment. <laughs> Breathing out, rolling back down. Let's do that a couple more times with your own breath. Breathing in at the bottom, breathing out to lift, squeeze the glutes. Take a breath in at the top, breathing out, rolling back down. Good, one more time. And then just let the knees drop from side to side. A little bit of a windshield wiper. <laughs> and then take any last little final movements. And when you're ready, coming down into your final resting position. Letting yourself relax down into the mat. Or whatever you're lying on. Taking this time to rest.
Take a deep breath in. Full breath out. If you want to stay, please feel free to stay. Just start to gently move the body. <laughs> Get my little helper here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and then making your way back to a seated position. Are you going to let me up? No. Seat, find a nice long spine, close the eyes if that feels comfortable. <laughs> Just take a moment to thank yourself for making the time to be here, spending some time with yourself, tapping into your feminine, your masculine knowing that we share these energies, we all have these energies. And we can really tap into them and start to work with them so they work for us. We can start to live our life with a little bit more balance, which is super, super important. So thank you very much. I know the practice wasn't perfect. There was lots of outside noises and Aria barking and but that is what it is all about. <laughs> Just learning to roll with it. It's not always gonna be perfect. It's not always gonna be textbook. Namaste, have a beautiful day, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time.